Question number 59. The recovery of brain activity after the resolution of temporary blocking factors in neuroplasticity is termed as and the options are these. So I think this is a tough question and for those who does not know about neuroplasticity, I will tell you in brief that neuroplasticity is basically the ability of the nervous system to change its activity in response to the intrinsic or extrinsic stimuli by reorganizing its structure, function or connections. Right? It mainly seen in case of traumatic brain injury, in case of stroke and so on. So now we will talk about every option in brief. So if we see the mechanisms of neuroplasticity, there are mainly two mechanisms. First is the neuronal regeneration or basically collateral sprouting. And the second one is the functional reorganization. So there are different theories for this part. First theory was the redundancy theory. So this hypothesizes that whenever there is an insult to a specific area of a brain, the opposing side or the opposite half of the brain take charge to sustain that lost function. So we have two halves, right? The left hemisphere and the right hemisphere. So this theory says that if there is a problem with a certain area in the left hemisphere, that area of the right hemisphere will then get activated and compensate for that specific function. Now, it was conceptualized by Galen. The second theory was the recreation theory. It hypothesizes that brain can reorganize other portions of the brain to overtake functions that they were not intended to do. So it was conceptualized by Broca. We know Broca's area, Wernick's area, right? So that Broca also conceptualized the vicariation theory. So it basically says that a part of brain, if damaged, the alternate part, which is not supposed to do that lost or damaged parts work, will do the work when it's necessary because the work has to be done and someone has to take charge. So the secondary one in that brain area will take charge and will do the task. Now, both of this theory is not completely right or completely wrong because with fMRI, it has been proven that both of this theory is not quite correct. So the third option was the dash thesis. So this theory hypothesizes that damage to one part of brain could loss function in another area due to some connected pathway. This concept was conceptualized by Monaco. Now, there are different types of dash issues, right? We will come to that. But the example we can say is the hypoperfusion of ipsilateral thalamus after an MCA stroke. Now here, the thalamus which receives its blood supply from branches of the posterior cerebral artery and a branch of posterior communicating artery should be unaffected during an ipsilateral MCA ischemic stroke. Surprisingly, in approximately 20% of acute MCA stroke, there is noted hypoperfusion of the ipsilateral thalamus upon computed tomography perfusion imaging. These shows or these proves the theory of diastasis. Now, there are different types of these diastasis. The first one, the diastasis at rest. So what does it say? The classic von Monaco type, such as ipsilateral thalamic hypoperfusion in MCA stroke, which I already described here. The second is the functional diastasis. Now, this is when an area of diastasis is found when another part of the brain is activated. A good example of this is when lesions affected the putamen when given a functional task of their ipsilateral hand causes hypoactivation of the ipsilateral cerebellums which had no signs of hypoactivation at rest. Dynamic diastasis can also be used and has been used when areas of the brain can be both hypoactive and hyperactive depending on the task. The third is the connectional diastasis. So this is when a loss 
of a part of the brain forces the rerouting of information the information has to go has to pass so there needs to be some sort of rerouting this has been seen in rat models where subcortical lesions can cause a decrease in the interhemispheric connectivity of the motor strips the final one was the connectome diastasis now with adverse imaging techniques now we have seen that the vast complexity of connections between neurons a map can be generated and this is called connectome this map shows clusters of high connected nodes which are then linked by a limited number of nodes or basically hubs if damage is done to a hub this can cause much more severe damage than a non hub node so this is the theories of diastasis and now we will see the last theory so the last option was functional substitution it hypothesizes that brain reorganizes its neural circuits to compensate for lost or the impaired functions this reorganization can involve the formation of new neural connections or strengthening of the existing ones it depends on experience and the environmental demands i will give you a brief idea about the functional map changes after a stroke so here in this image you can see it is a normal map right where the normal somatosensory representation is done for shl that is for hindlin and sfl that is for forlin now suppose there is stroke right so within hours after this focal or the gray area yellow area shows reduced sensory specificity responding to both fl and hl stimulation over the ensuing weeks growth promoting processes are triggered local axonal sprouting dendritic spine expansion and synaptogenesis occurs in the peri infract cortex several weeks after stroke specificity in sensory responses returns neurons that were formerly responsive to stimulation of hind limb becomes responsive to fore limb stimulation so basically it reorganizes right now i suggest all of this who are watching this video till the end please go through these two links at least for once because the whole concept of neuroplasticity is a very complex one and to understand it clearly i think these two articles will really help you so i think now we have guessed the answer so the answer is option d that is functional substitution